All right, so let's start with a bit of a recap here. So three years ago, Benighted comes out with uh, what was then their uh, follow-up to Asylum Cave, which was a very solid release. It was more on the side of Mellow Death, I feel like, uh, than some of their previous albums, right? So uh, this CD was a bit of a misstep, in my opinion. Um, it kind of took and sharpened those pop sensibilities and it glossed over the production and it did a lot of things that people were really uncomfortable with. Uh, Benighted have always been a band that were at the advent uh, of grindcore. They were really at the, the, the frontier of it, of, of brutal death metal grindcore, kind of like mixing up all these different genres. This felt like an inappropriate sidestep and something that's just all too safe for a band like them. Um, so after that, where is there to go from there? Um, cue this new CD that just came out, uh, just came out about a weeks two ago, uh, we've got the follow-up to Carnivore Sublime, and that is... Necrobreed. Right. And I was very, very suspicious of this album at first, considering the last album. And the album right. before it was starting to move in that direction, I feel, with the, the pop and the more melodic parts and the, the strength choruses, like on Experience Your Flesh from the last album. Yeah. yeah. And just a lot of elements I don't think worked well with their sound, like... I don't know. I just felt like they were getting more and more generic. Right. Yeah. No. Nobody's saying they were going in flames. No. 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 They, it's you're, it's not like come clarity situation or sounds of playground fading or anything like that. But it was definitely, as I feel and a lot of people seem to feel, a, a misstep. It, their last album was their worst album in oh, my opinion. By a long shot. The first two albums that they came out with were kind of experimental records, at least in comparison to some of the other ones they made. But this one took those pop sensibilities and just did really nothing, nothing, nothing widespread with them. Didn't do anything that anyone hadn't done better. And in a lot of ways, it was just a detract. Uh, it felt like there were a lot of less uh, distinct and unique songs. The songwriting was nowhere near as sharp. It felt almost aimless in a lot of aspects as well. Um, but that is not the case with this new one. Not at all. Um, the new CD, Rest Assured, is a step in the right direction, even if it's not the direction that a lot of people thought they would take after the other one. Um, it's the right step for Benighted. Um, it's more straightforward, it's more punchy, it's, it's got a lot of characteristics that are characteristic of old Benighted, um, but it, it, is, it is very satisfying in its concept, in its production, and in its songwriting. Um, but let's get into the deep shit of it before we get into the more profound. Um, so there, there are a, a couple very small uh, caveats to the CD. There's not a real, there's not a lot of bad, honestly. Um, Eric, what do you, what do you think is the issue? I feel like a lot of the choruses are very simple, and it's just they, they're taking the Iron Maiden approach of just yelling the name of the song. Yeah, that's exactly like, what like, like there are a lot of the the punk elements come into play. They've always had the punk elements. Oh yeah. Uh, the deathcore elements that weren't the strongest part, fortunately. I don't think the deathcore elements should be any stronger than they were. They, they, they've always had their breakdowns and their, their shouted parts. But in this album, I feel like they're kind of overused in some places. They like, kind of are. They're a little excessive. Every other song is just Julian Tracian. I'm not sure if that, that's how you pronounce his name, but we'll go with Julian Tracian yeah. shouting the name of the song a couple of times. Right. And it's... I mean, it's catchy and it works, but it, it kind of gets a little repetitive over and it, over. Yeah, it wears a little thin when literally every single song follows that same formula back to back to back yeah. to back to back. Yeah. And in Brutal Death Metal, I know this isn't as big of an issue because we're faced with a lot of the same songs, you know, back to back to back. But when it comes to a band like Benighted, who are more renowned for uh, adding a lot of different components, a lot of genre-bending techniques to the repertoire... Mm -hmm. Uh, it does feel like a little bit of a letdown, but that's that's not a big deal. That's a minor. That's a yeah. really minor. Right, very minor. very minor minor issue with the album as a whole. Um, other than that, there's not really a whole lot of dips in the quality. I would say that Leatherface is probably the biggest dip, and that's like a point five difference between the, the multiple tracks. And it's yeah. got a great opening. It's got a commando sample just straight up, and I can appreciate that. <laughs> I can appreciate it. Benighted always seem to have very solid sampling. It always fits the tone of the tracks, and it's always absolutely hilarious, whether that's the intention or not. Um, 
So, so in that respect, sure, it's still worth a listen to, to some point. But I'd always have to have some kind of horror reference here and there. Of course, the album is based on their own original horror concept, so Leatherface makes sense within the concept of the track listing, but eh, it's, it is still a dip. Yeah, um, that and Dirt Doppelganger, I think, are the weakest two tracks. I don't remember anything from that track, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's the, <laughs> it's one of the more forgettable ones. One of the, Probably the only forgettable one. Leatherface right. has some memorable parts we'll get into in a minute here yeah. when we talk about the pros. But um, I feel like Dirt Do Doppelganger is fairly forgettable. Uh, Leatherface is... It's okay. It's just... It's more of the same as of the rest of the album, but it's done better in certain places like Versa Police. Is a, you know, it has a lot of the same elements. Yeah. It's just more, more memorable, hence why they use it as a single, I would imagine. Right. So, really, not a whole lot of bad on that front. Um, I, I, a lot of us are, are very pleased. Eric and I, we, we both have really been enjoying the CD. I've... Spun it about 15, 20 times myself. Yeah. I know he's done it quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, about 10 or 12. Oh, yeah. So so we're, we're knee-deep in some shit. Um, uh, as far as, like, positives here, we're going we're gonna to glow for a fuck ton of time here. Uh, it, there's a lot going into this that's just very, very powerful. Um, besides the intro, almost every track is worth hearing to some extent. Um, yeah, I should probably mention that. I don't like this intro. It needs to be said. <laughs> it's, it was a big red flag right off... Right off the bat, it, it just reminds me of Carnivore Sublime. I fucking hate Carnivore Sublime. Don't remind me of that fucking album. I don't want to hear it. All right, so, positives. <laughs> A lot of these tracks are very solid. I, I really appreciate how yeah. they've put the punch back into their tracks. Everything is so visceral, and the production, the production is, is so razor sharp. It's it is so fantastic. powerful. It has this this crunch that I've only really heard in in like dismember. Very dismember esque and very kind of similar bands. to uh, crust punk, like Man of yeah. Grinder and the like. Oh yeah, it's very heavy. The guitar has that chainsaw so sound more than the other albums, which were more of a brutal death metal to right. me. They always had some punch, but it was a little more towards the sleek side. I feel like there's a lot of punch on this album. There is a whole lot of punch to this album. The first single was Versipolis, and that one, just right off the bat, you had this just rev-roaring chainsaw, just very punchy, 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 back-to-back -back series of riffs. And it's very melodic, but it's also very brutal. They're leaning way more toward the brutal death metal side on this album. Like I was saying earlier, it is more straightforward than some of their earlier releases. Some people might be let down by that, but for fans who have followed the band for a long period of time, it feels like a bit of redemption after the last CD. It feels more like uh, getting themselves back on the appropriate path. And I appreciate them doubling down and coming up with a really great concept as well as uh, a really great and visceral package. There, there's just there's so much half to everything going yeah. into it. The drums are really good. Oh, it's yeah. the ex drummer from Necrophages, Romain Goulon. Oh yeah, we, we have to imagine Romain Goulon. I feel like he's a major driving force on this album. He really he's is relentless. He's very fast, very technical, varied. Which oh, yeah. is difficult for an extreme metal. His, his films visual. are very interesting yeah. too. There's there's actually a lot going on. A lot of people were worried because the the original drummer from Benighted had some very interesting work behind the kit. I feel like uh, there was really nobody else that could fill in for him. But out of anybody that they could pick, they really picked a drummer who has a lot of nuance to to his styling, and that's that's it's it's very good. It's very good. I have to I have to say. Um, the guitar work is also especially noticeable. The riff work here is, is great, eh? And rest in peace to the guitarist yeah, of this project. Because he left the band recently, and we're really left with the side guitarist who, who's more on the grind side. Maybe we'll see more of that surfacing in their material in the future, but he left a worthy legacy here. These riffs are solid. Uh, they're well-crafted. Uh, they're more straightforward, like we've been saying, uh, but there's a lot of good tremolo, there's a lot of good just straight back-to-back -back, just chugs, and there's a couple breakdowns here and there, but they're they're done very tastefully. Um, yeah. yeah, They've always been about the breakdowns. That's never oh, yeah. that's something they've been shy about using. No, and... but they, they definitely do them in, in a sense that yeah. they're not overused, they're not in disdain, they're not in shitty taste. It's not constant, it's not simple, you know... <laughs> just simple slow breakdowns they're very brutal and they serve to break up what would might otherwise be monotonous songs with endless blast right agree it the songs are very well paced they're most mostly on the faster side but they're very well paced and broken up with slower parts and slightly experimental parts in places and um i just feel like it it all works together very well right it, it really does and it leads to some very interesting tracks um 
And they're, those are very much enhanced by a couple of the features on the CD. Um, they actually do have two in particular. I know that uh, the band themselves have been doing actually some features on their end. I know they did a track with a board as well yeah. as some other bands as well. Um, but they've actually got some bands coming back that are actually showing some props to them. Um, they've got the, what is his name, Trevor Strand? Trevor Strand from uh, Black Dahlia Murder. They recently right. toured with them, and apparently they became friends because he's featured on one of the singles, Forgive Me, Father. Right, and that is by far one of the best tracks on this yeah. CD. Besides the, the puppy solo that I know a lot of people aren't particularly fond of, people are kind of curious where the sample originated, by kind of yeah. a morbid curiosity here myself. It's a disturbing sample, but personally to me it doesn't bother me. It's extreme music, the concept is very extreme. Right. The concept is about a man with schizophrenia who kills and dismembers animals and sews the body parts to himself to essentially, in his own warped way, give birth to his own family. But regardless, <laughs> uh, the sample is used to decent effect yeah. here. It and fits. It fits within the context of the song. The song itself is great. Forgive Me Father is one of the best tracks on the CD. It's got a very memorable chorus. It's got some very powerful uh guest vocals occurring on here. Yeah, I've got to really give it to the singer here from The Black Dahlia Murder. He does an excellent job. Um, I, I I don't see him really adding a whole lot to his, his original project, but here he makes sense uh, within the, the patterns of the story, what's going on within the context here. Um, and yeah, uh, other than that, we've also got uh, another kind of uh, feature as well on Come With Disgust, which is a banger. It's yeah, a slapper. It's slapper. a bona fide five star cut. Um, I'm not aware of the of the band that this gentleman's from, but he does an excellent job of breaking up the monotony within the different vocal approaches here. Um, one of the big things about Be United is that they have lots of different vocal approaches, and I feel like here and as well as the Black Dolly Murder area, um, they really do a lot to add even more variation, uh, mind-boggling amounts of variation to the tracks, yeah. and uh, this is another one of the best uh, cuts on the album. Uh, as ridiculous as it sounds, a song called Come With Disgust is by far one of the best tracks on here and probably one of the best cuts that Be United has made it's so far. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, it should be noted that there are, there's actually more variation in vocals, I would feel, in this album in general. Uh, there's actually kind of like a gore grind gurgling part at the end of Leatherface. And which... there's a part in Forgive Me Father as well that's pretty juicy. So. Yeah, <laughs> very, very moist vocals. Right. But, uh, so that's really interesting. I'm not sure if I like the, the gore grind vocals, but it's something different. It's, they, it's hit or miss with okay. you, I, I suppose. It's a, only for a short time at the end of the song they appear. Right. So whether you like them or not, it's not a big deal. They're not there for long. But it's interesting to see them trying new things vocally, because Julian is an amazing vocalist. Oh, yeah. He's, He's all over the place. He can do multiple styles. Everything except is clean singing, as yeah. far as I can say. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't do a whole lot of that well. I think he, he tried it a tiny little bit on the last CD, but we're not talking about that. No, let's we're, forget we're that. We're good on that. So, uh, other than that, uh, a lot of really consistent songwriting back to back to back with some more straightforward, brutal riffs. Um, a lot of album highlights. Honestly, there's not a lot of cons here. Um, songwriting is, is absolutely superb. A lot of really meaty, crunchy riffs. Drumming is excellent. Vocals, very varied and well realized. The story and the concept is also very strong throughout. There's a very deep tie between the beginning of the album and the end of the album. You really feel like there is a progression between those tracks. Um, personally, I think I'd give it an 8. I, I'd say I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah. It's one of their best albums in years, and I'd put it right up there with my personal favorites, uh, Icon and Identity. Oh yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd put it right up there with those two as well. Uh, as far as recommended tracks go, uh, there's a lot of really good material here. It's really it's hard to choice. choose. Uh, Forgive Me Father was one of the singles, and that one is by far one of my favorite tracks on the CD. Uh, as we already mentioned, Come With Disgust is phenomenal. That great, Yeah, I, I did come in disgust, but also satisfaction, rest assured. Um, <laughs> So, uh, as always, thank you for tuning in, and um, eat dick. Yep. <laughs>